song. Let it ride, the Southern River Band. Letting it ride in. This is the Four Wheel Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter. Again, the Southern River Band, Let It Ride. Ironic for this episode, I've said it before, but we're talking about desert trips where we're just really going to let it ride. The Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram, YouTube, Back Chat, that's where you find us. Um, mate, this is going to be an episode pretty much based on you and your travels. It's going to be a dusty episode. A dusty episode. Uh, a muddy episode. Slim dusty. <laughs> um, mate, we're going to touch on all things desert. You've done a lot of desert travel. You enjoy your desert travel. That's that's well known. Love it. Um, love it. Mate, I want to open your brain up a little bit and I'm going to sit back and listen. But uh, firstly, what, what deserts have you have you uh, accomplished? Well, I've uh, done the Simpson Desert twice. Um, done the Ambedel, which was probably one of my favorite ones. Yep. And also, um, I was slipping my mind in. Oh, yeah. So out near Cotton Creek as well. Yep. So... <clears throat> Look, there'll be plenty of other people that have done way more desert trips than what I have. But uh, I've done three, four solid desert trips that have been from about eight days to about two and a half weeks. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Is that long enough to... It's it's kind of that length. You, you, once you want to go back for more. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, cool. It's my favorite style of, of travel, favorite style of camping. Is There's just nothing better than being out there on the proper red sandy dirt clear skies with a nice warm fire and generally speaking it can, it's usually warm out there depending on the time of the year but yep. sometimes it can get freezing like next level cold and yes i know if there's anyone listening from canada and stuff it's much colder there <laughs> but when you're acclimatized and you're wearing t-shirts and shorts negative degrees is that's cold anywhere it's cold i don't care where you're from that's cold <laughs> anywhere um so yeah let's go in a bit more detail on these because this is purely a, we, we've sort of covered a fair bit over the podcast now the the previous five episodes where we, we've looked into the basics the mods what Beginner you're gonna need to of, start off yeah, yeah. so th- this is probably our first sort of deep deeper dive deep into dive. um a specific topic and I I, would just, I want to know the difference between the Simpson Desert, the Amberdale Highway, the desert that you see there, out the back of the Pilbara. There's so much variety throughout Australia. Talk us through the Simpson first. You've done that twice, so you're well yeah. equipped there. What's that look like? Um, so the Simpson Desert, uh, contrary to what people may believe, it's not that red. It depends on where the sun is. So there's a sand dune out there called Big Red. Yeah. But... During the afternoon, late afternoon. What's that? What's that festival? Is there, the big, big red, uh, big red bash? Big red bash. That yeah, might yeah. be. That'd be a good one to yeah to have a look at. Sorry, um, no, you're right. Um, so anyway, so the the big like big red is actually orangey yellow. It's more orangey yellow. More you like beach looking sand or yeah, kind of like your construction. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird, right? But people manipulate photos, and I did myself as well, color graded because it's big red. You can't have big red looking <laughs> big yellow. <laughs> Um, but a certain time of the day, uh, when the sun shifts, then the, the colours change. Right. It's really bizarre. But mainly out there, that, that sort of tends to happen. Whereas somewhere like the Amberdell, it's mainly sort of more red and uh, Pilbara, very rich, dark red. Yep. But the, the Simpson, it changes from morning to midday to afternoon. Um, it is, it's probably one of the easier, uh, easier sort of desert trips. Because you have a few different routes, you got the French, um, you got the French line. The one that I've done is the Madigan line. Yeah. So you do part of the French line, do do the QAA line. The Madigan is probably the most remote, and when they just open the desert again, uh, sometimes there's no tracks. So over the dunes, the the wind swept away the tracks. So you you've so got to kind of navigate. You say open the desert again? Is it shut for a period of time yeah, throughout the year? Yeah, it shuts around October till about March. And that's just the Simpson Desert. Uh, most, most most deserts will. Oh, yep. It's not a good time to travel because it gets so hot, and when yeah, it gets okay. so hot, the sand gets really hot. It gets way more boggy. Yep. And then also it it's it, it sort of puts the like the rescue teams at risk as well because yeah, they have to go out and it's just too dangerous. Yep. It's a very harsh environment. So desert deserts are very harsh. That's why there's no one out there living, right? Yeah. Although you do get people at Mount Dare and things like that, which is at the opposite end of the Simpson Desert. But the Simpson Desert is more about going up and over dunes. And to be honest, 
sometimes it gets a bit old going over the same dunes again and again and again. Do you know the number? What's the... Uh, it's uh, 1150 something. Depends where you start and stop counting because there's a point where a dune is a sand mound. Yeah, right. Or a dune. So I'm not sure where that is, but I've, generally speaking, it's about 1150 something dunes. Right. And everyone tries to count them to start with, but you get about... 50 in and then you lose count yeah of course far <laughs> out um look it's awesome it's awesome country to, to travel yep. to simpson like you really nail your sand driving after that trip because you've got to know how to drive on sand because if you don't figure it out pretty quick you're going to get bogged because it's just sand dune after sand dune after sand dune and you quickly learn that you don't need a right foot pedal going up over dunes you just need a right tire pressure and nice steady pace, yep. momentum, momentum to get over the dunes. But it does have a sprinkle of uh, salt lakes. And some of these salt lakes, when there's a bit of unexpected weather coming through, can turn into absolute mud pits. And we had an incident on the uh, the second time we were out there on the QAA line. My mate Torbs, he completely almost rolled his car. Uh, two oh, tires yeah, off the bed. we this, haven't we? Yeah. Ended up in a hole. So that was a Simpson. I was, I was on the QAA line. Right. Yeah. Okay. So... Oh, here we go. Yeah. So the camera car got stuck first, and um, but he nearly made it to the end. So therefore, Torbs went to the attempt to save him. And... Um, what a yeah, valiant def- effort that is. Definitely too much right foot. But when you're in the moment, in the situation, it's easy to judge. Yep. But... Obviously, things got really slippery and he started getting a bit worried. So, he just kept the power on. And sometimes when you're in a situation like that, you don't realize how fast you're going because he still claims to be going slower than, than that. But clearly, he Looking went a little bit too fast. The footage. Yeah, that looks yeah, like it's yeah. heavy. But all it took, had he been a bit further on the other side, he probably would have been all right. So, I had to go around the long way, uh, which took a little while. I had a trailer as well. And then we had to pull him out. So, when things go wrong out in the desert... You're, you got, you're self-reliant. You're relying on your convoy. Yeah. So for everyone listening or, or watching, what was the damage to Torbs there? So his CV exploded as we pulled him out. But there's two tyres off the bead right there. As, as he's sitting halfway in the water, um, the water, the muddy, corrosive salt lake water is also in his footwell. So that caused an electrical fire as well. Right. So the next, uh, well, it took a bit of an effort to get him out. So we pulled the camera car out first. Then we used the camera car as a safety car for me to anchor off because I had to reverse in to get him out, to get Torbs out. You, had, had you unhitched the trailer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to unhitch the trailer, yeah, definitely. Um, managed to get Torben out. And then basically happy days until we realized, okay, well, there's two tires off the bead. That's why he got stuck in the first place because they came off when he hit the bank sideways yep. and then went into the hole. Uh, but as I pulled him out, his CV exploded because there was so much load on it because it was so deep in that in that muddy water. Um, what might have been good is whoever got bogged there last time and got rescued by the Birdsville uh, recovery truck would have been nicer than to leave a big flag there or something just to let people know there's a big yeah. hole there. But in saying that, we didn't leave a flag either. So that's just Sweet. being a bit hypocritical there. Good at this on this Probably should have left that there. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, we got him out and then we had to sort out the CV. Now, the CV was, was destroyed. Do we have a spare one? No. We just pulled it apart. Sat phone came in handy. Ring a couple of mechanic mates and just, just to reassure us that what we were doing, our plan was, yep. was the right plan. Yep. And we got him out. Jeez, look at that. It's busted yeah. up. Oh, yeah, it was busted up. So that was that was a very expensive day for for Torbs. That's a uh, just a good indicator, I suppose. It's not to say the desert trip's going to go that bad, but if no. it gets to that extreme, you've got to have some know-how. Yeah, yeah. Look, that that was that was like an accident, so to speak. Um, but in terms of what can go wrong out in a desert, this is probably what I'd say. So rarely, every now and then, in a fairy tale, a convoy emerges from the desert without any problems. Yep. Every single desert trip I've been on, there's been some form of problem. For example, losing all the water on day one, all the water in the camper trailer. So all I had was all I had was drinking water left. I had no washing water, no shower water. What happened? Uh, the the tank just cracked. It yeah, was a poly right. tank. Yep. On a trailer that had a um, defect on those on on the on the tanks. Yep. But we already started a trip, You're, and yeah. you know, so much planning went into it. 
uh, between a convoy, we had enough water, but there was no water to have a shower. And when you're doing a desert run for, oh, that was the Ambedel, that was like 10 days. No shower. Yeah. It gets a bit smelly. Ronnie, you're not exactly the nicest bloke to be around there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, there was a place halfway where you did have a shower, thankfully. But yeah, but there was only one shower over that period of time. Yeah. So on, on the Amberdale then while we're there, so this is, we have spoken off air a little bit about Amberdale Highway as well. How, yeah, yeah. How much you enjoyed that and almost a must do if you're going to do a desert trip. Best one. So explain what, what makes that so good compared to say the Simpson. Okay, so the Simpsons more about the sand dunes and it's not that far a distance. You could do it almost just on normal fuel tanks with extra jerry cans. Yeah, right. What's the... With the Amberdell? The Amberdell's 1,300 k's. Oh, okay. Righto. There is a fuel stop sort of halfway. Um, whereas the Simpson Desert, if you do the French line, it's only like, I think maximum... I'm just throwing numbers here, but I'm, I'm just going to throw a big number so, to cover it. 400 k's, I Oh, say. right. However, if you do the mannequin line like we did, it's six to seven hundred k's. Yeah, okay. So, yep. and then you're on soft sand, so you're burning more fuel as you're going. Yeah. So, if your car can get four hundred k's on the highway, it's going to do about two hundred fifty k's on soft sand desert. Yeah. Because it's it's slow going, you know, and your vehicle's labouring, working harder, especially if you're towing as well. Yep. <clears throat> so the Amberdell is vastly different because it goes from. Uh, a lot of corrugation to not well you're going more parallel to the sand dunes as opposed to simpson you're going up, up yep. and over the whole way so the ambedel you're more parallel to it, but there's there's a lot more places out there and you cross from wa to south australia yeah so for those following along it's basically laverton to cooper Pedy. yeah that's La running west yep. west east so yeah 1300 k's it's basically it's it's almost like the nullarbor but shifted yeah, up shifted in the up. Yeah, yeah. And Lem, Lem Bedell had, has a, uh, you know, he had a very good sense of humour calling it a highway. How can I assure you? It's not a highway. It's, like yep. the Gun Barrel Highway, the, the Connie Sue Highway, you know, they're not highways. Yeah. <laughs> These are rough, rugged roads. Yeah, yeah. Corrugations, uh, salt lakes. Um, so the unique thing for us with the Amberdale Highway was the fact that it had been closed due to floods. And um, I've been in contact with the ranger and he had indicated it would be open around about this time. So we planned a trip for about that exact time. As the days got closer and closer, we had kept having regular phone calls and um, it was, yeah, it would be open pretty much the day you get here. So we would have first have the permits for it as well. Right. You need like, I think it's either three or four permits because you're going through a military zone as well. A military zone? Yeah, yeah. There's like a military zone out there where they used to test nuclear oh, weapons. Oh, is that on the Amberdale? Yeah, yeah, heard that's that. part yeah. of it. Yeah, so um, that's part of it. There's another section as well where they test it as well. So you go to a test site. Um, they got like the two totems, and we had I had a Geiger meter with me so I could measure the radiation. Right, that was really cool. And it hit it like numbers. <clears throat> it hit numbers that would would damage your DNA if you stayed there for uh, yeah a period of time. Jeez, that's uh, full on. Like like if you stay there for a week, it'll probably like give you a high risk of cancer or higher wow. risk of cancer. So. <laughs> But it was pretty cool being there, you know, um, uh, Torbs, because he doesn't want, he definitely doesn't want to have kids. He was sitting on a totem for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure of so, that? Yeah. But I mean, the, the whole trip started with, we just got access. And as we drove in, there was a grader that was still stuck in where the mud was, but it was solid. So it was still there. We just so, swallowed it, basically. Yeah, we're going to go back and recover it. Um, and so there's still a bit of water around. So the second day we went up to, I think it's called uh, Yo, Yo River, Yo Lake or something, just to do a bit of a bypass. And we all got totally bogged on day two. Oh yeah, here it is, Lake, Lake Yo, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was a bit concerning because we we're burning up fuel, more fuel than what we thought. And that we always estimate for more fuel. So with a desert trip, always estimate for more fuel. And 1,300 Ks, you've got one. 1,300 Ks, we're like, Two, three hundred k's in, and we're already stuck. And there's only one stop on. There's only one roadhouse yep. on this whole yep. stretch. Yep. Yep. There's one roadhouse, which you are not near yet. No, no, miles away still. Yep. Miles away. So anyway, like that whole day was just winching and getting us out, and then we finally got out, and we're like, well, that that was a shit idea. <laughs> but you never know till you get there, right? Uh, we came across a couple of camel shooters out there too. All right. So there's people out there that are employed by the government to to cull the camels because the camels are a huge problem out there. They they go to um, stations and they break fences to get to the water troughs 
and basically drink all the water so the livestock can't get it. So a lot of them they capture and send. And obviously over, not yeah. native to Australia. No, no, camels, they're not. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of them get get cold, and we came across um, a camel uh, a camel shooter while we we're out there. He had all these legs hanging off the back of his cruiser. It was like eight legs for each side, maybe more actually. It might be twelve in total. And he had his car bog, so we helped him out, and um, he was covered, kid you not, head to toe in blood. When I reached out to give him a handshake, he was he was surprised, you know, because he was covered in blood. And I was out. like, you know, just did a respectful thing. What time, of, what time of day did you just come across him? Um, would have been late Arvo, probably Jeez. about four four p.m. Yeah, around that time. I don't yeah. know if I would have been, put my, <laughs> I would have been yeah. straight past him, I reckon. <laughs> Oh, it was just really interesting because like you drive for ages and and like the scenery kind of stays the same for a bit and then you, then you see, you know it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, heaps of like those um I forgot what they're called those those oh, what are they called those spiky little lizards, fawny devils. Oh yeah, fawny yeah, devils. Yeah. Heaps of those out there. Super cool. I don't know if I've actually seen one of those. They are so cool. They look spiky. They're actually quite soft. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you pick one up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you pick them up. Yeah. Yeah, just wash yeah, your hands right. afterwards because you might get salmonella. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, good tip. <laughs> yeah. Same with snakes. If you, it, like, I don't recommend picking up snakes, but if you are inclined to pick up a python and you know what you're doing, definitely wash your hands. Yeah, they carry sal- salmonella. Yeah, because, well, you know, they obviously poo and then they are still slivering over oh, it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. I didn't know that. That's a tip from a snake handler. Snake wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so really really cool out there so you always get the blue skies usually in a desert unless there's a, a storm that just comes out of nowhere yep the weather can be really unpredictable out there yeah okay um like for example the simpson desert uh we knew there was going to be a little bit of rain at one end but we didn't know it was going to be like two days of just torrential rain yep. that just changed everything and when you're halfway through a trip the only way is forward so yeah yeah it's, so this i think <clears throat> I, I don't know if i'm going to pronounce this correctly but the roadhouse yeah ilkirka Il- yeah Il- ilkirka i think that's probably about right close yeah, yeah. so well, that that is like the only place to get fuel and the fuel out there is three dollars thirty three thirty three dollars thirty and that was um 2016 so fuel prices Awful. nowadays far out <laughs> that's where we had a shower as well yeah right yeah yeah so yeah. how is that like is that halfway is it or is it it's roughly halfway um, it's not far from crossing the border. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's still on the WA side? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're still on the WA side at this stage. Right, eh? Um, it could be on the other side. I'm pretty sure. It's been a while. But um, when we got there, yeah, it was still on the WA side. Yeah. When we got there, he was he was saying he didn't know um, what the Salt Lake ahead had because a week ago when he went and had a look, it was underwater. That's how early we got there. So yeah, the Ranger right. had only really known up to this point so that was a bit of a surprise for us. Far out. So we we filled up, at, well didn't fill up actually. We just put enough in because it's three dollars thirty. Yep. So we did our calculations. Well, you took the risk and just. Well, it. well, we had to. So if we couldn't go past, we'd have to go back, refuel, and then go down a Connie Sue Highway or something. Yeah. Get back okay. To the so that crosses through. <clears throat> so it's not far oh, from yeah, crossing yeah, yep. crossing the border. Yep. Gotcha. Um, we saw heaps of camels there actually. Um, that was really really cool. At Neil Junction, there is where the Connie Sue cuts through. Yeah. Heads up to Warburton. Yep. Yeah, righto. So you, yeah. Yeah. yeah but- so that was behind us still. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, it's, just, it's just awesome. There are heaps of scorpions. And you can you can tell the scorpion sort of burrows by... It's like a U, it's like a U shape with like these bulbs. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's how they dig in. That's yeah, the it's, it's, for, in. it's for their claws, you know. Yeah, so right. They can get their claws in. <laughs> so at night, you know, we sit around, have a few drinks or whatever. There'll be like a couple of scorpions coming out. Checking us out, yeah, what's going go. on here? Yeah. Wow, uh, dingoes at night. It's just oh, the desert. It's just it's just something different. Like, yeah, and the, and it's something that the, everyone's I reckon just got to go out there and experience. Even if it's just a short trip, just go out and come back or something. Get a little yeah. Well, I was looking. I'm on the Wikipedia page here for the Amberdale Highway. The plane wreck. Ah, uh, you see that? Yeah. So that's probably the funnest part of that um, drive. In terms of having fun on the drive, because you've been driving parallel to the sand dunes the whole time. Yep. Right? Over flat plains and stuff. Oh, yeah, when James you get got to, up here for yeah. us. Yeah. When you get to the plane wreck, um, there's a track that peels off to the north and you, you're going over these rolling dunes. And because um, not that many, well, no one had been out there for ages. So it was it was all quite untouched when we went. Yep. 
there was not really any tracks. So we had to sort of just follow like where the sand was on the dunes where there's no, um, where there's no plants or, or, or vegetation. Yep. Um, and then we got to the plane wreck where we camped and that, that was really cool. So I've got a really cool time lapse of, of that plane. So the story behind that plane was um, the guy had stuffed up on a fuel calculation and had then had to ditch the plane there. Um, and I think there were some spinal injuries. So it wasn't a good result. I think everyone survived, but there were some yeah, pretty bad okay. injuries. You know, where was he coming from? Where was he going oh, to? Where was he know? coming from? We'd be I, able to find that. Yeah, we'd be able to find we? out. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I can't quite recall. Really cool plane wreck though. It's all it's all there. There's a visitor book inside the it's wing crazy, somewhere. Oh, a really? Hatch on the wing. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. Nice bit of a squeak at night with the wind, but the wind changed and picked up a bit, so it woke us all up because the uh, the rudder just went bang bang. Yeah right. <laughs> yeah, like, What's going on? Yeah. Um, no, nah, awesome. Incredible. Um, the funny thing was because no one had been since the bad weather had been, they closed it. All the corrugations, for the most part, on the WA side. Uh, all the silt and sand had been washed into the corrugation. Filled up the... So you could see the corrugations, but you couldn't feel them. Yeah, right. It was smooth. Like it was so good. But as soon as we crossed over to South Australia, that's it was a whole different story. Yeah, okay. Like corrugations had, that you just... Yeah. We just hadn't had the rain that... I don't, don't know. It's like yeah, it's like the rain has like, stopped there. It's almost like at the border. That's where it started getting just bad. turned the corrugations on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like South Australia. Welcome to South Australia. Oh, corrugations. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of corrugations, the the Pilbara, how does that compare to to the Simpson and and the Amberdale? Probably a little bit more, I suppose, accessible. Yeah, for much, a lot of us, but much more accessible. Um, the Pilbara, look, the Pilbara is, is oh, it's very remote as well. Especially yep. when we head out towards um, uh, the Cotton Creek out yep. that way, Desert Queen Baths. Um, so you, you start at Nullagine, That's where we started. Yeah, and you go in on Skull Springs Road, and then you get to. Um, uh, running waters, awesome place. It's like a 25 degree spring, so you can like it could be freezing at night. You jump in, it feels warm. Uh, Caroline Gorge isn't too far away. That's cold, right? <laughs> that is so cold. That's and a crazy it, thing yeah. about the Pilbara, though, isn't it? It's like you look across that landscape and you just see red rock everywhere. Yeah, and then you you come into these beautiful water holes if and, you find them. If yeah, if you find yeah. them because they they look like they're nowhere to be seen yeah it's hard to believe there's water actually out there but it's um, crazy it's yeah. crazy like it just it just gets held there and then like all summer it's still there because it's sort of blocked by a big rock you know yep yeah it's pretty Incredible. epic yeah yeah um look a lot of places in the pilbara um when it starts drying up they can get a bit manky and stuff but but we have like the springs and that it's it's always good yep and i bet there's a lot of places we've all driven past and there's a water hole right there the only the locals the, know about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the way it should be too, probably. Yeah, so definitely, definitely. That's where we get Jaden, and uh, he can tell us ah, about yeah, all those spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Jaden, you know, out that way, um, you got the the Woody Mine. What's the other? Telfer? Yeah. Right. So I've got a bit of a confession to make here. Look out. Um, so this this is where I learned a lot more about being more organised and planning and planning myself, checking myself because I was relying on mate Harry. And we met up at the pub, we'd done all this and I asked him about the mines. He's like, no, no, last time I went there, I just drove through the mines. They're all cool, cool about it. But since then, things have changed. You, you know, mines are pretty manageable, like safety and environmental and all that yep. stuff. So we go into the first mine, which I think was Telfer. And we, we drive in and then Harry's like, oh, shit, I can't remember which way we go. We ended up at this uh, intersection. There's like the camp, runway, and the road we came in on, another road there. And then like there's a road, there's a... Tr there's a ute coming up here with a amber light, a ute coming that way and one coming that way. So we got surrounded and he's like, oh, what are you guys doing here? A bit lost, are you? And um, I think one of them recognized who we were and he knew what was going on. Uh, one of the guys said, you need to remain here until the next supervisor's land because the supervisor just took off on the plane. Oh, there was another right. jet coming. And then he buggered off and the other guy goes, nah, just, just go, mate, just go. So we're like, yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going, we're going. Yeah. But then the problem was the next mine, so we get to another mine and that one we took our chance got caught at the um <laughs> we actually got caught at the camp and like i was a little bit annoyed with harry because i mean he obviously last time he was there was fine but now things have changed so it's not really his fault but 
at the time I was like, dude, we might have to turn around because they were umming and ahhing, but the people sort of recognized who we were as well. Yeah. And they made things happen. They gave us access and we continued in our merry yeah, way. Right. But we was, I reckon we were that close to being turned around because we hadn't called ahead. So if you're going out oh, that okay, region, yeah. you need to contact both those mines. Yeah, right. And, that, and with their permission, it should be fine as long yeah, as they know yeah. you're coming. Yeah, as long as they know you're coming. Like, yeah. you give them like a, always give them like a gap of like three days because shit happens in the bush all the time. Yeah. You might stay somewhere longer. You may have vehicle trouble. Um, so you're sometimes going to get delayed, you know. Yep. Um, but that, that was really cool. Um, yeah. And it's the most randomest places you meet people sometimes out yeah. of the desert. You're like, where did this guy come from? You know, yep. like a camel shooter on the M. But L, there was another guy um, from Warburton. He lived in Warburton. We're driving down a track and then all of a sudden there's a fire. There's a fire on the track. I was like, what, what's going on here? We pull up and there's a guy with a swag, a camel and a fire on the track. Wow. Because they didn't expect anyone to come at night yeah just yeah yeah that's only something i would do right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so he apologized and we helped him drag the camel and his swag and then move the fire <laughs> so he, he <laughs> had a bit of a chat traveling on going. a camel no no um he'd shot he the just, camel he was oh, he, he was cooking it but he, oh, he had a car with him he had a car with oh, him sorry, but that, that was off to the side but his I, swag was on a road i thought he was traveling by camel he's got his swag no, and, no. Fire and he's just going back to the old place no no it was, it was a dead camel yeah, yeah, right, okay. That would have yeah. been pretty cool though, actually, if he was riding a camel through. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty random, eh? And then like his his mate was was off the road and there's there's another tip, do not camp on the track. Yeah, you never know who might come yeah. by. Oh, you never know. You, you know? do not want to be underneath that seventy nine, I wouldn't have thought. Nah. Um is, is that the biggest uh, sorry, it's not on now, but the Or dust. The dust. yeah, well, have a look at that. Bull dust is something else, eh? Where is where is this one? So that's outside um, Mount Dare. That's on the way to oh, yeah. start the Simpson. Yep. From the eastern end towards west. Gee whiz. <clears throat> yeah, that, the dust is next level. You actually you're literally sitting in the vehicle. It doesn't matter if all your doors are sealed, all your windows are up. All of a sudden, you can taste dust. You'll get something. Yep. Yeah. You'll look at your passenger. If you have a passenger, and be like, "Can you smell and taste dust?" I guarantee it. But your answer will be yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, funny story that in the, actually in the Pilbara we were on our. On our way back, my mate who I've spoken about before, Hamish, in his old troopy, um, aircon wasn't exactly working. Uh, and so he's had to go, I think he ha he would have had his windows down, no doubt. But also at the back, he's got a big 35, but just sitting on the back door. And he was using it to get up onto the roof. So he's standing on his tyre, getting up onto the roof that way. Yeah. He's actually setting his swag up on the roof for the trip. <laughs> but what he's done is as his weight on top of the 35, which is on top of the old troopy um door at the back yeah. has shifted the door down slightly oh, so it no. doesn't exactly close properly it, it does lock yeah. shut but the amount of dust that he had kicking up off the back wheels straight up into that door yeah when he got out of the car we got back to newman we got back to his place and he stepped out of the car and had like a thick orange layer like no through way. his hair it's on his face on his arms and he just had to cop it for the for the four hours home. Wow! Um, it was in, it was incredible. To and see. he had so, his windows closed. Well, uh, he had the windows down at the front. <coughs> yeah. But nothing like you know, if, if you have your windows down, unless it's like, yeah, yeah, really, really bad. Like you're probably not coughing a lot. We we were just getting dust off the back wheels, but because of that slightest crack in the back, it just back sucks door, it through. Eh? Sucked it straight back through, and then the exit point would have been the front window. So he just he just sat in. <laughs> he didn't actually realise he was that covered. And when he got out of the car, I I looked at him. I just said, mate. Go and have a look in the mirror right now because <laughs> this, this is incredible. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, it gets, it gets everywhere, doesn't it? It does. It does. Yeah. Like one trip to the Pilbara stays with you for life. Yep. Yep. I, like I said before, a badge of honour. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think yeah. that, Jay, when you get a bit of red dust from the Pilbara, it's a badge of honour. Um, if, if you go look at a secondhand car, just pull off some of the trims and you'll know if it's been yeah. to the Pilbara. Yeah, yeah. And maybe stay away from it. <laughs> yeah, life, probably, probably stay away <laughs> from it. Yeah, especially if, if it was my car. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the, the biggest things go wrong in the desert like i say if you're yeah. very lucky to get out of there without any trouble is that the worst event you've had you know, on a desert um, trip that's pretty extreme yeah i'd say it's up there probably with with the worst i've been but i've been in situations probably a little bit worse than that before but wasn't out in, out in the desert yeah right yeah so yeah, that, that's a pretty bad situation. It's probably almost as bad as it gets, apart from no one got injured and stuff, which yep. is the main thing, right? 
So what, I mean, what's what's common to go bad out there? So sort of like getting- engine engine components, uh, fatigue from um, from you know heat and corrugations, uh, just washouts as well. Yeah, that's you. Washouts is a bad is a common bad thing out in the Pilbara because you go down Skull Springs Road, you'll be driving along at about 100, 110. All of a sudden, a washout comes up. Yeah. By the time you wash off some speed, you're still hitting it about 80. And it's like, boom, boom. And then you get that anxiety of when's the next one going to come. Yep. So you're driving at 80 k's per hour yep. for the next 10 kilometers. And you're like, ah, stuff it. 110, uh, yeah, yeah. two k's later. Wash out. Constant. Yeah. So being the first car is, is not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Take your time with that, I suppose. I've, done, I've had a couple of those actually up in Exmouth, just heading into a couple of those gorge tracks. Yeah. You're cruising along, you've just come off the highway and you, you're going 80, 90 down there and all of a sudden there's a little creek that you don't sort of see from the distance Yeah. before you get there. Catches you out, eh? Oh, jeez. I've just waited for something to go flying off the car. Like three k's down the track, it's like, when's when's my tyre coming past? Or it just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't feel good at all. Um. Going solo in the desert recommended. Can, um, can you do it? Could you cross the Simpson solo? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I would definitely do it. Um, I would only suggest doing it if you've done a few crossings with other people yeah. first. I yep. definitely wouldn't go out there for the first time. Do it yourself. Yep. Um, I think you just need that bit of experience. And once you're out there, you, you kind of realize how remote you are. You know, it's, it's um, some people get a bit uneasy as well knowing that they are remote because yep. it's like you're driving for ages and then you stop and then you get out of the car and then all of a sudden it just hits you how remote you are yeah but, but to me it's like this is so awesome yeah right? but to some people and i can understand that like, it can create a bit of anxiety yeah especially if they're by themselves um even in, even in a group and i guess sometimes homesick hits some people as well yeah right eh? it kind of sometimes hits my kids um, not so much in the desert because I haven't really taken them on a desert trip, but like down south, uh, we go from Israel Bay to Twilight Cove, which is a whole different story. That place is epic. It gets to a point where they sort of realise and they get a little bit homesick yeah. for a little bit, little bit of time and yeah. then, then they stop. Yeah, righto. So what, what do you recommend then, I suppose, time of year for people that don't know? Uh, yeah, time of year is probably, the best time of year is probably like uh, June, July. Yeah. Because it's a lot cooler out there. And if you don't like flies, June, July. If you can tolerate flies, go anytime. Yeah. The flies can get pretty bad. Yeah, okay. Like I'm yep. talking next next level. Yep. I've been broken by flies many times, so I'm okay with it now. But the early days, I would I would lose my shit. I'd have tantrums. Everyone has fly tantrums. Yeah, I'm still losing my shit at flies for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking like the level of flies where you can't even eat something without swallowing flies. Yeah, okay. You're swallowing like eight, nine flies a day. I'm not kidding. It's it's the tiny little bush flies. Yeah, right. Those little bastards. Just you know, just get, get it everywhere. Anyway. But it it just becomes part of part of your facial hair or whatever. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is though, they don't go for your food. They go for um, like all your orifice because they're trying to get the liquid. Because that's how is they that survive. Why, is that yeah. why they jump on you all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The, be, the best time in the bush is when you're going to do a number two. <laughs> it's the only time you have flies in your face. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go into that one. <laughs> but here's a funny thing. Um, the first trip we did on, on the Simpson, the flies were next level, like next level. Um, that's where they broke me for the third or fourth time and, and I just, whatever. Everyone else will fly net, so I just chuck my fly net. I'm going to get used to this and I got used to it. But one morning we woke up and it's like, there's something missing. No one could put their finger on it. And then, because in the morning, the flies take a while to accumulate. And then we realized there's no bloody flies. Well, the fly's gone. What happened was that night it got below freezing and flies can't survive in freezing weather. So if they get zero degrees or minus one or something, all the flies die. Really? Yeah. It took two to three days to get them back up to where they were as we got closer to Fink. Wow. So, yeah. I Crazy. Didn't know that. Because their lifespan's only like two to three days anyway, yeah. isn't it? Or like something a couple like, of weeks or something. A couple of weeks, yeah. is it? Yeah, Not sure, right. yeah. That is, but, um, that's incredible. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. That's just... It, it was bizarre. It was like, this is bloody awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then it eases back into it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Have you travelled desert with kids? Um, Have the kids come on any of those trips? No. No. Nah. No. I, I haven't. I think that will be next level because I would, yeah. Because you, you're going that far. I'd love to do it one day, but um, 
kids. So I want the kids a bit, bit older. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I appreciate like the environment they're in. In saying that, doing that trip down south, which I used to do every single year with the kids as well. Yep. It's probably on par with doing a desert trip. It's so remote. Yeah, right. So the Israelite Bay sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you look on a map, it doesn't look that remote because you've got the Nullarbor up here or like the Air Highway. Yeah. But it's actually really remote. Like yeah. I consider the Air Highway remote. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of roadhouses and stuff. But down there, it takes like a day to half a day to go down on those tracks, even though they're only like 60Ks, some of them. They're rough. It's, they're yeah, rugged. Yep. Yeah. Adventure getting in. Yeah, I've heard plenty of good things about. Have you done down there, Jaden? Uh, no. 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 It's a bit of a Might need to take yeah. us. <laughs> so much history. Yeah. So much history as well. And it just changes. But yeah, because there's old, there's old like, homesteads and that out there. And yeah, there are too. Yeah. Obviously, the, the telegraph station. Yep. Just telegraph up, station. South there's, of Euclid there. There's but Bill in Dunes. There's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I'd love to explore. I think it's. The Baxter Memorial. Um, the story about. You know, John Baxter. Yeah, okay. Or Edward John Baxter. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll have to... Might have to tee that up, I reckon. It's 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 a beauty. It's yeah, a might beauty. have to get a four-wheel drive podcast. Right? Little uh, little getaway down there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, all, I'm, hey? I'm all ears. If Mate, I'm, I'll, I'll be there anytime. Yeah, that's awesome down there. Um, yeah. we, we've covered a lot of essential equipment, um, tips and tricks. There's the obvious ones, I think, for traveling the desert, but... I don't think we can reiterate enough the, the first aid stuff. The first aid, the snake bike kit, the yep. EPIRB, the satellite phone. This is a, a situation where I carry the EPIRB and the satellite phone. Yep, righto. So EPIRB for when shit hits the fan and you need help now, like like critical help. Yep. Satellite phone for anything goes wrong in the car. Um, even if it's minor, you can call ahead and go, uh, can I please get some parts sent to Birdsville or yep. Mount Dare? Or you call Mount Dare, have you got such and such spare parts, you know, maybe trailer bearings or something, something common. On so that, do you have to register pretty much that you're going in? Uh, so you have to have permits for Simpson Desert. You have to have permits for oh, Amber okay, or Highway. So through the permits. Yeah. It's, it's permits for everything. Know that yeah, yeah, yeah. Righto. Look, the Pilbara, contact the mines. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> Cot- <laughs> Cotton Creek, if you're heading in to get some fuel. Yep. Um, that's a must. You can't just turn up to, to a community. Yeah, righto. Uh, unannounced yep. um, look some you can like like the Think Desert the, when you go to Think you can sort of just rock in yep um, but it pays to check and see if they have petrol if you have a petrol car especially petrol um, or diesel sometimes they may not have had a delivery yep or they may have had a couple of clubs come through and just drain them from fuel you know yep so on on this trip were you splitting the tools like we, we've spoken about before yeah. like so you were yeah so tools electrical yeah, yeah. Um, although I'll give Torbs the electrical side, I still carry some electrical stuff as well. Yeah. Because it, there's often that someone will forget something. Yeah. Like a multimeter is the most forgotten thing uh, in my situation. Right. And yeah, so I just carry a multimeter anyway. And I'm prone to blowing them up. So when I blow up Torbs' multimeter, I can give him mine. So here you go, mate. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah you have it in the wrong setting yeah, and you yeah. go, boom. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> what about camera gear? For your camera, like your camera car. Oh man, so that's a whole another level carrying all that camera gear. So that's what you you forget about that when you yeah, watch these videos. Yeah. Is that there's actually yeah. someone's filming for you. Exactly. So Chris in the Prado, which you didn't see much of, um, he has a dedicated sort of cameras in the car. I have the exact same almost carbon copy cameras in my car. Right. Um, that way, if one of them fails, then we get the other one out. But also because um, I travel with my camera guy as well, Jono, so he will get out and get shots as well. So we always, we have two of everything. So two drones, two FX6 um, Sony cameras. Uh, they're like a 10 grand body with, you got add lenses and all that. So it gets up there. So you yep. really got to look after your gear as well. And all that dust does yeah. cause a bit of an issue. Um, and then we got like A7s and then I've got um, my steel cameras like Canons and stuff like that too. Yeah, so right. there's, there's a lot of stuff. So my back seats are full of camera gear as well. Right. Um, which makes my, so it's funny because my car's gone through so many different stages of 79. Had I not filmed and done all this YouTube stuff, I would have a complete different setup. I'd probably have a fridge on the backseat or something when I didn't have the kids with me or whatever, you know? Yep. So just having the back seats taken up, there's a clothing bag and then cameras on top, you know? Yeah. I, so There's a lot of money in the, that side of it too. I the camera gear? Imagine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of money in that side of it. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's incredible. 
This is Ronnie Dahl, Liam Duggan. We are the Four Wheel Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter. So, mate, what's it like to finish a desert trip? Achievement, uh, a sense of achievement, and hopefully you're not counting a repair bill. Yeah. Usually you are you counting a repair be. bill. You're also thinking about what am I going to change in the car next time. It's pretty much like any trip, I guess. Like you would finish a trip and you'd be like, oh, we're well, probably review. going to do this to the car or yeah, this, yeah. you know, or I want to change that. It's, yeah. So did, a lot of that thought will go in. Um but yeah, sense of achievement. But the thing is, depending on where you're finishing your trip, if it's a desert trip, well, to start a desert trip, you're in the middle of nowhere. To finish a desert trip, <laughs> you're usually in the middle of nowhere. So your trip's not over, really. Your trip's not over. No, not even, not, yeah. <laughs> it's so far from over. So it takes days just to get to Mount Dare for the Simpson Desert. Then you get to Birdsville. Uh, yes, Birdsville's a bit more sort of uh, civil, civilization feeling to it. Yep. Because it's, you're kind of in farm country again. But you're still driving for days until you get to Brisbane or Sydney yep. or Melbourne or something. Um, when it comes to the Amberdell, well, if you go west to east, you're going to end up in Cooper Pedy. And Cooper Pedy is next level. It is awesome. It is like Mad Max. It is, it's crazy. People living out of rocks. The underground town, isn't it? The underground yeah. town. It's so fucking cool. It's like, yeah, pardon my language, but it is so cool. Yeah, right. Um, don't run, don't walk backwards because there's holes everywhere. <laughs> it's like Swiss cheese. You send a drone up, it's like Swiss cheese. There's holes everywhere for you know, open miners. And you meet the strangest characters <laughs> out there too. Um, yeah. Shout out to our friends in Cooper Pete. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooper Pete is an awesome town. Um, definitely worth visiting. Yeah. Uh, it's so cool. It's like, it's like, proper mining town where like you can go and they can barter for opals you can yeah i've seen a little bit of that on tv before tours. that's cool it's crazy yeah. it's cool and then like the characters you meet there was a there was a german guy um thick sort of german accent when he was talking to us a lot of words australian words he didn't know you know nissan patrol gq locked his keys in the car um no no he had a flat tire that's right but we had to try and get his um uh, tire changer out or whatever it was so we had to help him try and get all that out and there was something to do with the doors or something i can't, I can't recall but we were there for quite a while helping yeah. him out <laughs> you know just helping out this, this old geezer but um all these little mining compounds they look like something out of uh, an ap- apocalyptic movie yeah you know? right. you're like if i trespass here i'm probably going to get shot at that kind of feeling yeah, yeah it's super cool i reckon um grand you know the show grand designs australia uh, the- where they do like a, the Renaults on on a house, or a, they knock down and build a new joint, or whatever. It oh is. Yeah, 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 it's a good good show. I'm pretty sure they do an underground house Renault in Cooper Pedy. Yeah, oh. like a, and I don't know if you get to see the finished. I have to go back and have a look, but it was yeah. like it was cool to see a little bit of like how they built these underground. It's crazy houses and stuff like that. Yeah, incredible. There, there's some places that do a tour, so so oh, you right. go through the house. It's pretty weird. You're in someone's you're going house. Going through someone's house. Yeah. But it's, it's super cool and there's like a little engraving some you know like so when the when this house was first here there was two rooms and then the next person dug in another room and it's so cool you don't you don't need is it right you don't need like air con and heating there it's so well regulated yeah it's like 20 degrees so it's 40 degrees time. outside 20 degrees in consistent so that's your prize at the end of the amberdell yeah yeah it's like it's yeah. like it's like the jewel of the the opal jewel yeah, of, Literally of jewel. yeah south australia so it's, that's yeah, that, I, I suppose there would be that sense of elation after a trip like that, though, because you, you're you potentially yeah. not coming across people for 10, 12 days. You're, yeah, pretty much. You're out there, you put a lot into preparation. You, you, physically, mentally, you're putting yourself through a little bit doing a desert trip, no doubt, especially if you yeah. if it's just you and another another vehicle or just yourself. But it's... Yeah, yeah. You, you come out the other side pretty pretty worn, but pretty satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, we actually had an extra treat in Cooper PD because we, uh, there's, there's, there's a police officer in, in Adelaide that, that I sort of uh, message on socials with. And he teed us up with um, a guy called oh, uh, Len or something. And he not had Len his... Bedell. No, not Len Bedell. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I can't remember. It started with Ellie's name a, yeah. a while ago. <laughs> he, he, had this, he had this opal mine that we could do a tour on. And I asked him, could we camp in there? And he's like, yeah, you, you can camp in the in mine. There. We camped in the mine, which which turned out to be a stupid idea two weeks later. Like we camped in there for one night. We got out two weeks later where I'd parked my car, not where we slept, but where I parked my car and camper trailer 
collapse 20 tons of rubble in jeez so you know lucky it was brave didn't happen all there brave yeah man than I. well i wouldn't say brave i'd just say naive because we didn't think Did, about that yeah at the time, right. you know? you pretty know. cool experience though that you oh, i was cool. out of there safe yeah it was it was a cool experience yeah. like um that staying underground was really cool yeah i did make a mistake by trying to do like heat beads underground and it wouldn't escape so i had oh, to right. technically run it out because we we're all bloody suffocating <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the, the vents didn't quite work so that's a nice sauna though the people are paying good money for those at the moment <laughs> yeah co2 <laughs> <laughs> sauna. maybe not the sort of sauna you want yeah um yeah so like after the trip like cleaning you know there's there it's taxing on the vehicles yeah so it's like a service before the trip, a service after the trip. Yep. Wash the damn car as quick as you can too. Because some of that mud and dust out there can be, you know, once you mix it up with water, can be more corrosive than the ocean. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Four wheel driving 101. That's Ronnie Dahl. I'm Liam Duggan. Four wheel drive podcast driven by Shelter. It's that time again. Love this time. This time the fire is lit above ground, not underground. <laughs> The time where we throw to the voice in the sky to answer the questions from our listeners, our viewers. That's You reach us at the Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. That's how you get to us. Um, voice from the sky, take it over, please. I'm shutting the computer. Shut the computer. I've, I've got it Done. from here, mate. It's all you. Um, so we've got our first question from number one Duggo fan. <laughs> so you've, you've got someone out there, mate. Big time fan. Big time Big fan. Time it's not me either. <laughs> I'm, I feel like this is your account, mate. <laughs> this is <But> set up. <laughs> you could have just asked it on the on the podcast, yeah, mate. You didn't need to write the it actual, in. Uh, the actual part, but anyway. It's around the fire pit, mate. I want to talk about this around the fire. Fair enough, mate. No, no, no. Is this not, not blaming you, mate. Not blaming you. Um, no, it's easy. Do remote road houses take FPOS? I thought of that myself, too. <laughs> That's a really good question, actually. Um, well, look, say if the FPOS machine wasn't working... Uh, because of connection or whatever it, that's a real possibility um, look most places do have it now but I always carry 1000 cash when I'm on a trip it's not in a car all the time I got so I, I reckon so I've learned a couple of things about you so you hide chocolate in your car I know that for a fact <laughs> and now you're telling me <laughs> there's one G's baby in there somewhere <laughs> always one G's with me mm, number one Duggo fan must setting, him nice. setting him up setting him up gonna steal his cash and chocolate <laughs> no I'm worried I'm just in it for the chocolate to be honest with you. oh man no, that 1000 cash that's for like if we run out of fuel or if we need a spare part or something but yeah you se know. seriously it would, it's very yeah. handy to carry cash in those remote yes especially definitely. desert trips yeah definitely and some local was charge a bit for information no just kidding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um cool so uh next one and our last one we've only got a couple today okay, yeah. uh this one from sawzy where do you access permits to travel through stations or remote communities oh yes yeah so um you just got to go on the website um like a like the website of the area so say for instance canning stock route you just type that in. It actually has a website where you get permits. You can also uh, access permits via like various websites uh, of indigenous communities or uh, the government websites. Yep. That's to say they're all in different places, but that's how you find so them. You pretty much Google where you're going to be. That there'll be yeah, yeah. You you, you be able to find them. Yep. You'll be able to find links through forums. Some of them may be null and void now, but then you'll find a different link. Yep. Um, it's it it it's different for each state and stuff like that. And, and for where it is like stations and and stations is more about just letting them know and getting permission and some stations it's about can I please tow a trailer through your property or not um, so that's that could also be a thing because some stations they don't like you towing especially if you don't have experience or if it's too big because if you get bogged then it's kind of their responsibility yeah. they got to come out and pull you pull you out yeah. and it's a bit of a pain that's fair enough yep. yeah so that's where that 1G comes in handy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sweetener. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. That's I think it. that answers no, that I one. Think, yeah. I think that was good. Um, we actually do have one more. I've missed it on the run oh, trip, yeah. boys. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, from the Lekker Trekker, which <laughs> brands would you not use going into the desert? Ooh. Oh, Lekker Trekker. Which, oh, I'm not going to go down, Britta. The, this, the brand's route, that Dude. wouldn't be fair. What I would say is look at Australian made. Uh, look at stuff with reputation there are certain trailers sort of cheap trailers that i would not take across a desert trip 
last thing you want is is something to fall apart like something happened on the Ambedel highway recently uh and i think an elderly couple towed a particular trailer through the had a problem with the wheel that came off and then the body separated from the trailer and then the rooftop separated from that so there was a photo of all those things dismantled there and so then they got pulled through the ringer on socials for leaving it there oh, but that, they couldn't get it out get it, yeah so and there's a plane wreck yeah. and a trailer wreck out on the yeah, there's a trailer now. wreck out there now i think it <laughs> might be yeah it's probably been pilfered now anyway if it's worth anything yeah <laughs> um, yeah, right, eh? yeah so it just we have seen other trailers on our travels where like just the bearings and stuff are blown out and they're usually like the trailers that are not like your off known as good off-road trailers yeah i don't want to diss any dish any uh, brands because there are some more affordable brands that are probably capable of doing it it's just yeah but you pay for quality don't you you pay for quality Uh, another thing i probably wouldn't do is is use mono tube shocks if you're doing a big (laughs) desert trip uh, I'll go remote res, but only if you're going to upgrade your suspension for this trip or something. Yep. Say if you had these tubes, um, mono tube shocks for years and years, it might be time to upgrade them because yeah, safety, but also like you know vehicle handling. Yep. Yeah. All right. Lekker trekker. Um, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Lekker trekker. Thank you. Oh, Lekker trekker. Lekker trekker. Lekker trekker. Beautiful. Gonna, yeah. That's it. Um, yeah. Cool. That's it for that's it for the questions, boys. Just uh, send them in on. Instagram, yeah. IG. Get them into us at yeah. uh, Get them in. the Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. YouTube is Backchat. We are the Four Wheel Drive Podcast driven by Shelter. Are you, are you, are you asking me to make I'm sure? And I'm just signing out like that. That was a bit of a weird <laughs> one, but I'm going to go with it. And you've got to say something. Favel. <laughs> What's that? Danish. Oh, that's yours. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't I question I hope I said that right. <laughs>